Kate. And I'm John. And we're Bucket List Travellers. We've been chasing a goal of visiting 100 countries and we've been travelling full time since 2019. In this video, we're going to share our highlights for one year abroad and our favourite things from the eight countries we've visited. Our travels have taken us through North and Central America and we've loved experiencing the different cultures and meeting great people along the way. This year has been full of amazing adventures, as well as the unexpected twist of a global pandemic resulting in us living in Nicaragua. We'll be uploading a new video each week, so to get more great travel inspiration, don't forget to subscribe. And if you like this video, don't forget to like and comment. Our year-long adventure started in Oahu, Hawaii. This was a great place to start as it has the perfect holiday vibe, is so easy to get around by public transport, and it has an amazing array of natural beauty and delicious food. Our Hawaii adventures continued along the Big Island, where we found a great Airbnb and had a lot of fun exploring the island. We also had brief stops in Seattle, Las Vegas and San Diego on this trip, but our favourite experience by far was our night dive with manta rays in Kona, Hawaii. It was otherworldly watching these amazing creatures doing acrobatics underwater. Lights were shone underwater which attracted their food and in turn attracted the manta rays to feed. They were so graceful gliding through the water. Some of them took a shining to me and kept coming up and patting me on the head. From Kona in Hawaii, our next stop was Canada. We flew to Calvary via Denver. From there, we caught a bus to the ski resort of Banff. Going from balmy Hawaii to winter in Canada was a bit of a shock to the system, but it was thrilling to be in such a pretty snow town. We fortunately hit the secondhand shops early to get some warm clothes, as the next day we went dog sledding in minus 20 degrees Celsius. In our three weeks in Canada, we also visited Jasper. We took a train through the Rocky Mountains, stopping briefly in Kamloops, and we spent time in Vancouver and Vancouver Island. One of my favourite experiences in Canada was our self-guided foodie tour of the famous Richmond Dumpling Trail. There's a large expat Asian population in Vancouver, and the Dumpling Trail of Richmond, BC is a world famous foodie experience which you must try if you're in the area. We loved the variety of dumpling experiences on offer, including one restaurant that had robot waiters. Here's your order. Please pick it up. Enjoy your meal. We walked across the border from the US to Mexico on the 1st of January 2020. We spent almost a month travelling through Mexico, mainly by bus, with the exception of a flight from La Paz to Guadalajara. Mexico has so many things on offer, from picturesque towns like San Miguel de Allende to amazing ruins like Teotihuacan and Chichen Itza, to natural wonders like Hueve del Agua and of course, delicious food. However, our favorite experience of all was swimming with sea lions in La Paz. These puppies of the sea are so playful and it was just a joy to be around them. We were amazed at how close we were able to get to them. We crossed over to Belize on Australia Day 2020, which was the 26th of January. We caught a ferry from Chetumal, Mexico, to Cape Corca, Belize, stopping briefly at San Pedro to go through migration. Stepping onto the island of Cape Corca, you immediately feel like you're in holiday mode. There is basically one sandy street that runs down the island, and the whole island has such a relaxed vibe. There's nothing better than finding an outdoor restaurant and having a delicious and extremely cheap meal washed down with a fruity rum. One of our favourite spots on the island was Ice and Beans, where you could get a smoothie and some donuts and just while away the day on a hammock overlooking the water. 
The Belize Barrier Reef is the second biggest barrier reef in the world and the snorkeling there was the best that we've ever done. Swimming with sharks in Shark Ray Alley was an amazing experience and there were just so many sharks there. Our favourite thing to do in Belize would have to be eating lobster by the beach. Lobster in Belize is ridiculously cheap, being about 15 US dollars for a small lobster with sides. It's so fresh and delicious, and we couldn't help but treat ourselves to lobster dinners almost every day that we were on Cake Hawker. If you're a lover of seafood, you will be in absolute heaven in Cake Hawker. Guatemala is a country of stunning natural beauty and plenty of history. It isn't the easiest country to go through as its mountainous terrain makes for some slow bus trips. However, those who make the journey will be rewarded with spectacular sights like the Mayan city of Tikal, the turquoise waters of Samuk Champay, and the gorgeous area of Lake Atitlan. Our most memorable experience when visiting Guatemala was the Acatenango overnight hike. This hike was very physically challenging, but the views at the top were amazing. At night, you can see lava erupting out of the nearby Fuego volcano, and it's an amazing sight to see. You can see more of this amazing experience in our video on the Acatenango volcano hike. El Salvador was a real surprise package for us. Yeah, people was just so nice and so friendly and welcoming. We had a fantastic time there. Yeah, and what we really love is off the beaten path travel. Being in a place where you're the only foreigner there is something we really enjoy. It's a bit more of an authentic experience when you're just there with all the locals. One of my favourite things was going to a night market, which we went to with our Airbnb host. Yeah. Nahuizalco. It was just so festive. There were performers there, uh, lots of food, and yeah, it was just a really fun atmosphere. And that was part of the Rutas de las Flores. There's just so much to see and do. So we did rappelling down waterfalls, we did zip lining, and there were so many opportunities to have food markets. It was fantastic. It's in the hills, so the climate's really nice. You don't have to battle mosquitoes, which is handy and just getting around was really easy as well. There were buses pretty regularly or you could take collectivos, which are just local vans that you hop on the back of. It's like a dollar or two dollars US to get anywhere and yeah, it was just really, really easy and really fun. There was even one bus that had a crate, crate of little ducklings in it, which was and pretty, cool, pretty cool to see. Yeah, uh, it was pretty awesome. And we also went to El Tunco, which is a famous beach area. And we did a surf lesson there as well, which was really cool. We're from the northern beaches in Sydney, Australia, but I actually caught more waves there than I have in my entire life before that. Like we've taken a few lessons before, but I usually only catch one or two waves. But yeah, I was on there, it was really cool. Yeah, it was pretty cool. We had one-on-one -on -one tuition which made it much easier to catch those waves. Also spent a little bit of time in a town called Santa Ana, which was one of the major cities in El Salvador. And we got stopped on the way by some local TV broadcasters and got interviewed in Spanish, which was stressful. I, I don't know if they got anything usable. We, we thought our Spanish was coming along okay. Until you get interviewed in Spanish, you don't really know how good your Spanish is. Yeah, or otherwise. We're staring blankly at the camera most of the time. But it was an experience. They were very nice. And the other place that we went to was more towards the border of Honduras, and that was the artisanal town of La Palma, which is really pretty, lots of murals. Oh, and who can forget pupusas? We mm. love pupusas. Got addicted to them. Oh my gosh, they're so good, so yummy, so cheap. It's the national dish. You can find them everywhere. They're made on street corners, in markets, um, and they're basically like a little flatbread with filling inside, and they're just so tasty, really affordable as well, generally around a 
dollar USD. Oh, 50, sure. 50 cents to a dollar, depending on where you are. Yeah, they can be filled with cheese or beans or like seafood, chicken, any, anything you can think of. And mm. yeah, so tasty. So after three months of travel at a real hectic pace, we needed a bit of a break. Yeah, we were just worn out. So it was nice to spend a little bit of time in Santa Rosa de Copan and just chill. We found a really nice hotel and just binge watched Netflix and yeah, just took it easy. Recharged the batteries. Mm. And then after that, we traveled to uh, Utila, which is a little island, a diving mecca uh, off the mm. coast of Honduras. Yeah. It's a really cheap place to go for getting your underwater scuba license. Uh, so we've already got our open and because of bad weather, we ended up being stuck on the island for mm. three days extra than we were expecting. Yeah. Um, they just get, kept getting cancelled, the ferries, day after day after day. but. We used that as an opportunity to go and get our advanced scuba diving course. It was definitely my highlight of Honduras. Yeah, the instructors were just so patient with us. Uh, what, what did you think of the diving? I, I thought we've seen we've seen better. Yeah, it was but it was okay. The experience in Belize was much better. We found just in terms of like the, the variety, variety of, of... of sea life and coral and that sort of thing. Utila was fine, but Belize was much better, in our opinion. But there were wrecks that you could go and dive to, so that was pretty cool. Just having the opportunity to do our advanced diving course there. Yeah, we, we did it with Utila Water Sports, and they were fantastic the whole way through. They had great accommodation too. Yeah, and there weren't that many people that were there at the same time of, as us. So we got a room all to ourselves, which was nice, because um, it's mainly dormitories there. And they've got air conditioning, which is very handy. Mm. You can also hire out their kayaks for free, which was good. So there's some nice beaches to go to around there. Yeah, yeah, it was a great experience all around. When we finally got off the island of Utila, we went straight to Lake Yahua. Yeah, so we found a really nice eco treetops uh, hostel, yeah. um, which we stayed in. They had really great views over the lake, nice hammock areas. Unfortunately, though, they had a whole lot of dogs and the dogs were, some of them were quite aggressive and I ended up getting bitten, which was quite a terrifying experience. We were just coming back from dinner and just entering the property and the dogs just rushed at me and then one of them bit me through my jeans. Mm. Uh, so yeah, we had to go to the doctor. I had to be on antibiotics for a couple of weeks, I think it was, yeah. um, and not swim for a week, which was quite inconvenient seeing as it was so hot in the areas that we were in at that point. But I didn't get rabies, so so that's a good thing. And it healed up pretty well. Yeah, yeah. Pretty quickly. It's, which is yeah, I've got a little bit a of a scar, but I'm fine. You're going to get some ex bad experiences like that, yeah. I guess, when you're traveling. But in the scheme of things, it was distressing at the time, but I'm OK. Uh, and to a certain extent, it, it allowed us to slow down even more, which given the we were pretty worn out by then was a good thing, I guess. When we got to the capital, to Gilsagalpa in Honduras, we found a really nice hostel in the city called... Hostel Palmira. We had really nice rooms. We had a balcony pretty much to ourselves and I was able to just sit, read a book and just relax for a few days. I really needed that and... Yeah, we ended up staying for a week. Didn't we? Yeah, it was quite a bit of time. We stayed in an area that had a lot of the embassies and stuff it was nearby. It a diplomatic area. We did a walking tour in the old city, saw a few of the old churches, learnt a bit of the history of the area. So that was interesting. Yeah. And yeah, I guess it was a good way to end off our time in Honduras. Yeah. When we made it to Nicaragua in early March of this year, we had no idea that we were going to end up being here for the rest of the year. We were originally thinking we'd be here for a month 
and in Granada for maybe a week. So Granada's where we live now, but the world had different plans for us. So the coronavirus pandemic, we'd heard about it for the last month before that. And it wasn't until we got to Nicaragua that the pandemic actually hit Central America. And by that time, it had spread worldwide and things changed really quickly, as you all know. So we had to make decisions really quickly. It was quite stressful. We've made a whole video about our thought process to why we stayed here as opposed to going back home to Australia. So if you want to check that out, we'll leave a link below. We, we decided to ride it out here and we're so glad we did because it's such a beautiful country. Yeah and it's just an amazing place to live. While we've had some amazing experiences in Nicaragua like volcano boarding and visiting beautiful cathedrals, our favorite thing about living in Nicaragua has been getting to know our adopted country. Its culture, its festivities, its language, its people, and its food. Living the expat life in a foreign country during a global pandemic was not what we envisioned when we started our one year trip abroad. However, we love living in this beautiful country of Nicaragua. Who knows what next year is going to bring? Or where we're going to be. But we're excited to see what's in store. We are Bucket List Travellers. See you next time.